Whoa, why did the room just start spinning? <laughs> hmm. Just a little. Like everything just like tilted on axis. Are we rolling? Do you need to do you need to lay down for a second? Let's get this. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it, Let's get I'm it on camera. Down. <laughs> I'm fine now. It was just kind of weird. It was like Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Dizzy. <laughs> yeah. So just moments ago, right when we rolled the cameras, Link said, why is the room spinning? And uh, just to give you a couple, just a review of the reactions, uh, Jenna immediately got uh, concerned and Thank began you, asking Jenna. questions like, how much water have you had to drink? Do you need to lie down, etc." And what I said was, let's get this. Let's roll right now. <laughs> he might faint. We might get it on camera. Well, it's like the room, it's, it didn't spin. It like, it's just like all of a sudden, it it's, like, it's like the earth tilted on its axis. And then I'm like, huh, why is, wow, why just, has everything ever happened doing to you that? Before? And then I look over at you and you're like clamoring to like start the timer. Yeah, yeah. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, <laughs> uh, we are diagnosing my vertigo. I have, you know... Have you had vertigo sessions? I've had a couple of things that have happened to me. First of all, many years ago, I had that thing where, like, uh, I had an inner, like, a, a oh, middle... Remember that. remember that middle ear deposit? I had, like, classic vertigo, and it, it was caused by this, like, just, a, like, a little piece of... I'll call it a little piece of sand. Like one of the floaty things. Part of an Orby. Inside of your. It never got out. You know, inside of your ear, you got these like loops. And I had to get my physical therapist on the phone and like, I did this, uh, I did this special treatment. Oh, remember where I like. A series of movements. Where I, yeah, a series of movements. Based where, on the infrastructure of the ear. Where I got the little piece of sand to traverse back to where it should have been. And that was, I mean, that was- Hold on, a permanent piece of sand that's supposed to be in the air? Yeah, like there's pieces of things- there, it's, But there's not sand. No, it's It like, isn't like a, biological, bird, a bird that takes it's rocks and sand. digests them to like do something. No, it's a biological piece of sand. Yes, yeah, biological pieces of stuff in there that are actually what is helps interpret balance. I'm sure the ENT's listening. Are loving it. Just loving how accurate this. First of all, is. shout out to all the ENTs listening. I I gotta I, I gotta gotta throw some love. Uh, they got way. three things to keep up with. Right. I mean, ears, not... noses, and throats. That's right, Rhett. That is what it stands for. When you think about it. Yeah. I mean, they could just be a whole doctor, and then it could be like no. You could add more. Well, they don't ENTBs. They, they don't even take care of the mouth. They take care of the throat. The whole part is for somebody else's job. Yeah, that's the dentist's job. I. But right now, I'm still I'm still evaluating whether I'm all right. So, thanks for your continued concern. <laughs> I think I'm all right. It was just kind of. Well, we'll like, find out. It was this year, but like, you know, when um, when I went scuba diving, uh, the next night I had like inner ear. Middle ear barrel trauma, like I could not clear, I could not equalize oh, yeah. Yeah. for uh, two days, and that was very discombobulating. But that was my left ear, and this is this is kind of in my right ear. Oh, so, was the tilting of the earth the same thing that you had with the sand piece missing? Moved the sand piece was um, spinning, absolute sp spinning to the point of like fast spinning, wow. not even slow. This is like, you know, if you have too much to drink and all of a sudden you sit up and then everything just, that's what this just felt like. It was kind of slow, but I can still see out of both my eyes. Well, I'm good. Well, you know, I'm good. We're here. We're rolling. I think we'll I'm good. It. I mean, I've been snowboarding the past two days. I do want to tell you about that. Um, I missed your your post, your you delayed did. New Year's Eve my party. My delayed gratification party. Like the way later than New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve party, and I'm interested. I have some questions for you about that because okay. Christy went to it and told me about it. Yeah, so, I'm interested in her perspective because uh, I was, I got some feedback from a couple of people that I that intrigued me. Okay. Um, I do want to tell you about something that 
I don't know if you've experienced this yet in Los Angeles, this particular thing that I'm going to tell you about, but I know that you would like it. Bring it then. Um, I, I love LA because there's always things that you can yeah. find out about. If this, you're is not, a, this is a big town. If you're not in LA, you might not know that there has been somewhat of a burger renaissance. Uh oh. Uh, so I'm all ears now. Los Angeles has become the place to get the best burgers in the world, I believe. Now, I believe that this burger renaissance is probably taking place in multiple places in the United States. But there's a bit of a battle in Los Angeles for the best smash burger, I love right? A good smash burger. And I like all burgers, but smash burger definitely my favorite. They're the best because they're they're so thin. Like a I don't I'm just not a fan of the thick burger. And then you get a thin burger and a slice of cheese and then they then it's like if you want it thick, we'll just add another thin burger and another slice of cheese. Well, that that is exactly what I experienced yesterday as a matter of fact. I mean, I'm th that burger is still with me right now. Just like your little piece of sand that's moving around your ear, that little burger is in my body moving around. That's good. It's turning to something much less appealing. I, I don't want to talk about that. Why do we always end up talking about digestion? We're not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Smash burgers are my weakness. It's, I mean, it may be my favorite food. I don't, I, I don't, it, I have a whole, I have a place. So much better than pizza to me. Like, well, okay, don't speak sacrilege, son. I know Christy would hate me for saying that, but like, I pizza's not my thing. It's, well, I get to a certain place and I can't imagine putting anything better in my mouth. Well, in terms of food. <laughs> and there's I, there's this peak that gets hit. Sometimes it's pizza, sometimes it's chicken tikka masala, sometimes it's <laughs> a burger. You know, <laughs> I, tikka masala. I, I hit the roof of possibility of culinary enjoyment. And I hit it yesterday. And it actually was the second choice. So Shepard has been telling me about a place called Burgers Never Say Die. So if you look at mm. Top ten burgers in LA. You see, there's multiple trucks and there's you know and and restaurants and best smash burger. I'm saying yes. Um, and a lot of them are like on the west side or like getting into Hollywood. And I was like, or too West Hollywood. I was like, drive. Oh, that's too far for me. And um, but he had spent some time with a friend in uh, the Los Feliz area, and I think this place is in Silver Lake. This burgers never say die. And um, I pick him up, and we're all ready to go. And, uh, you know, I didn't, like, call ahead or anything. I didn't think about the fact that it was a holiday. They were closed. Oh. They were closed. Huh. And I was disappointed, but then I was like, Shepard, we, we got Smash Burger on the brain. We've got to just find the next one. So I did a little search in the area. And up pops. You searched second best Smash Burger in the area? I just searched Smash Burger on, on Yelp, and this other place came up, and I realized at least on Yelp, it had more reviews and a higher rating than Burgers Never Say Die. And I saw the name of it, and I was like, For the Win, which is an interesting name. For the Win. I've heard about this place. It's also on the lists. Let's go in there. I haven't, I haven't there. been to either one of these places. <sighs> I feel so stupid. Yeah, you are stupid. Yeah, for not doing this. And so was I until yesterday, Link. Uh, for the win, it was open. It. You would love it. Oh, it was so open. Did you now, take a picture? Can you show me a picture? Uh, I was about to take a picture, but then I realized that the pictures that I had seen on the internet were better than the one that I was about to take. Of course. Uh, but the, the signature of this thing, which I'll show you, which you will really, really like. Onions. Um uh, let me see if I can onions in the burger. Some of them do that. There's like a certain type of smash burger with the onions. Oh my lord! So as you can see, there's so much. The patty comes out burger just an like inch. spilling out of that bun. The diameter of the patty is two inches larger. The radius is one inch larger. Mm -hmm. You understand how diameter and radius and work? You, and you want that edge the bun. Of, the, of the meat to be a little crispy. And you can get a single, a double, or a triple. I'm not a crazy person. I got a double. And the thing, as you were describing about a double, is that these burgers are so thin, I don't know how they're still together, but they just put them on top of each other so you have this um, a crazy amount of surface area for like the, the you know whatever that happens, the char on the grill. Yes. And they serve them all the same way. 
um, burger, grilled, cheese, gr- grilled onions. Yeah. Um, their burger sauce. Yep, which is like probably like a their secret Thousand Island type and, thing. And pickles. Mm-hmm. And that's the only three things they put on there. Now, they've got like ketchup and mustard and stuff that you could like put on at your seat, but you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to defile it. Two things about Smash Burgers that tell you that Link thinks they're amazing. First of all, pickles. I have never been a pickle person. Like... For all of my days eating Big Macs, and Big Mac ain't, it ain't a bad burger. I mean, it's not. I mean, I don't want to eat them all the time because then you'll come to realize that they're not a great burger. But sometimes if you get a good Big Mac, it's not bad. But I've always, don't, don't just keep showing me pictures. That's with of bacon. Burger. I didn't get the bacon one. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe you need bacon you don't on don't need smash bacon burger on a good smash Because burger. It's, this is what I'm getting at with the pickles. I would always take the pickles off my Big Mac or any burger because it's kind of distracting. But a really good smash burger is so greasy and juicy that you need something to cut it. And pickles are the perfect thing. And I'm coming around to the world of pickles because of it. This is the one. It's so, I mean, it's just oozing with. This is exactly what my burger grease coming like. off your screen, dude. Uh, Jamie, this is the one that I want you to. So their Instagram is for the win LA. Paint? Yes. You want Jamie to paint it? See that one right there? Can you do a painting? Yes. I actually, what if I did a painting? That would be cool. But I'll put it next to that picture. Yeah, that's the one. I'll take a little <laughs> screenshot of that. Okay. Sweet. So that's what my burger looked like. I got a burger, I got fries, and they had milkshakes. Uh, the chocolate was out. I got strawberry. Shepard got vanilla. The second thing that <laughs> lets you know that Link is okay, a Smash Burger right. boy is... I have gone through the trouble to learn how to prepare my own. Yeah, that's questionable. No, no, I've done the same thing. I'm just saying that. What? I'm a pretty dang good cook, and I can't get close to this. I'm not saying how good it is. I'm just saying I have put forth the effort to actually say, I'm going to make smash burgers for my family. Hey, kids, do you want to invite a friend over? I'm going to make smash burgers for your friends as well. Let me... and. Let me let you consider an analogy real quick. Uh, uh, so if, I don't think you understand my if, point. If you go to Italy. I'm not bragging. If you go to Italy and you see, uh, no, you're not bragging. I'm just saying the reason that I have stopped making smash burgers for people in my life yeah, um, is that if you go to Italy and you see Michelangelo's David, right, wherever that is, somewhere, yeah, and uh, you, you look at it and you, you notice the incredible craftsmanship and you notice the small penis and... Uh, the other parts of it that are just so exquisite. And uh, and then you say to yourself, I'm going to go back to my house and I'm, and I'm going to make this. That would be an asinine thing to think, right? <laughs> Where are you going to get the marble? You don't know. You're not trained. It's going to take forever. You don't have the time. Just go and look at David when you want to see David. Of all the things that I don't cook, which is everything, I loved him so much that I want to have it in my own house. And I want... And I, I feel like I could do it. Now, I do a decent, to good. Do you see how do thin the edges of this burger. are? Look, you've you, never, I've, look at that. You've never had a smash burger in my house. Okay, well, I mean, okay. But those are the, great. The bun is perfect. Those why, ingredients are perfect. Why is anybody making a burger that's not a smash burger? There's people well, starting burger restaurants in different places, and they're not making these. It's a different thing, Link. It's the best thing. Yeah, but it's like saying thin crust pizza and deep dish pizza. I see them as different foods. So a thick, and we'll probably get worn out. A thick. I have a preference. I like a smash burger better. But if I go to a restaurant and they have a thick burger and that's the burger option, and everybody's like, "You got, you'll love this burger." I've loved many a thick burger. I've loved a lot of thick burgers. But you know, I've lusted after smash burgers. There's a little slight difference, but I appreciate both. Both things. And you don't have to worry about, does the chef think that it needs to be like medium rare? <laughs> like that burger we got last week at lunch. And it was a damn good burger. But it wasn't cooked but enough, it, even it for me. Yeah, and it was just like, It wasn't medium rare. It was rare. It was rare. It was way on the rare side. Anyway, you don't have to worry about that with a smash You got to try it. Uh, I'm for not the a, win. I'm not a good judge of milkshakes. I, I'll just be, I know that you have particular uh, opinions about milkshakes. I'm kind of like, it's a good milkshake, but I don't like I don't judge milkshakes hard, so I can't tell you whether or not their milkshakes are great. Their fries are 
very much like in and out We're going for the same thing in terms of thin, uh, you need to put some salt on them probably if you really want to have a good time, you need to eat them fresh kind of thing. The burgers <laughs> are the thing that they have perfected. Now I gotta go to this Burgers Never Say Die because Shepard was like, I don't know which one's better. They're let's, pretty similar. Let's go to there today. I can't have two burgers in a row, man. Two days, two burgers? A lot of red meat. What are you trying to do to me? You gotta cut down on the red meat. Maybe this is happening other places in America. I don't know, but it's happening in LA and it's like an arms race. Let, let's, let's mean you have a little burger date. Next time we feel like we've earned a right, we're gonna go and get us one of these smash burgers. It can be like our Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day's coming up. Um, okay, so me and you are gonna go to get a burger on Valentine's Day. Yep, for every year for the rest of our lives. Well, I, this, uh, there might be a, maybe we just need a burger day. Maybe, is there an international burger day? I, wa I want it to be Valentine's Day. Well, I think I might have plans with my wife. Well, it doesn't have to be on the day. You know, me and Lily have a thing every Valentine's Day. And of course, me and Christy have mm. something. But the, the 14th is not sacred to us. Oh, okay. It, it's, as long as it's, in, it's, it's within the season. The month of February? Yeah, then we can get our burger. And um, you know what? We have our own little burger Valentine's Day. Because if we just have a burger date, then it's like, y'all have a date? It's like, yeah, but it's Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. It's a f Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, whatever you want. It makes it. Uh, if if you want to go get a burger in February and you want it to be a Valentine's Day thing, that's awesome. Every year, and I want to look forward to it. Well, do we only get to go get burgers in February? Yeah, uh, it's a baseline. I we need to. I need to know that once a year it's going to happen. I'm I'm sitting a bar low, man. We got to start somewhere. <laughs> I need to warn you how messy I got, how messy my face got. This Listen, beard, this beard and that burger, that, I, I almost felt embarrassed. Kind of, I was glad I was facing the wall, that's let the me beauty, tell you that much. That's the beauty of us having this date, is that we don't, we're not attracted to each other. I got And we don't care what each other looks it's like. It's not, a, well. There's it, no romance. This is the thing. It's not that I think you're attracted to it's me. Platonic. It's that platonic. It, it would be to see the amount of burger sauce that got into my beard when I ate that burger. I think it would be unappetizing. <laughs> I think I would need to face away from you. I don't look at. Or you. maybe we go in shifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stand outside while I eat. There you go. No, actually, you eat first because I'm still gonna have burger on my face when I come back out. I don't want you that to be the last thing. Go you in see. it. All right, you go in. I'm gonna go in first. You go in after me. That's how our date. I works. mean, I had to go get. Uh, I had to find water. A napkin was not enough. <laughs> Wait, what, were you in the desert? <laughs> you had to find water. I had to wet a napkin. I had to make my own wet wet wipe <laughs> in order to get out of there without looking like a fool. <laughs> I, I highly recommend. Yeah. It. So we'll our burger date. We will eat the burgers in shifts. We will not be seen together <laughs> having a burger date. What are you guys doing? Well, we're on a Valentine's Day date. Well, actually. I mean, he's in there right now eating a burger. I'll be in it in a little bit. Right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hey, you guys, speaking of love, speaking of Valentine's Day, this would be a wonderful thing for you to get for yourself or for the one that you love. It is the Cotton Candy Randy, uh, what are we calling this? It's a Valentine's Day tea. It's, um, I don't know what You know, it, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's a t-shirt. This says, will you eat my chocolate? Uh, from from Randy, I made it myself, and I won't say how. Right, uh, a little bit of gross, but you know us. And here's the thing: you can also get like Valentine's card postcards that are part of this. Collection. You can actually physically give somebody this as a Valentine. Available at mythical.com. <laughs> Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. You know, I've been married for 23 years. Yep, she's done it. She's done the work. Um, and I gotta say that Jesse and I talk a lot about how we really enjoy our relationship right now. And I know for a fact that a big reason for that is that A, she started going to therapy, and then B, she convinced me to start going to therapy. <laughs> and C? Uh, it well, works. We both go to therapy now, and I think that that working on yourself has made our relationship that, relationships are not easy, but it's made uh, our relationship easier. Uh, I definitely feel that. I have a mirrored experience 
with me and Christy. Uh, but a common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to be, quote, right. But sometimes the best ones happen uh, when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether with friends, work, your significant other, or anybody. We are huge advocates of therapy, so if you're thinking of getting on the therapy train, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com, slash ear. You know what, I might I might get emotional about this. Jenna, can you throw me that box of um, uh, tissue, nose tissue? Is it empty? I don't, I don't trust my, I don't wanna hit a camera. <laughs> <laughs> You're in athletic mode today. Oh, I uh, son of a. And then, <laughs> right on cue, Jenna about took Almost. out her entire desk by trying to walk through it to get a, back to her seat. athletic move, though. I did, I, are you dizzy, too? Are no, you, I caught you, everything. Nothing fell. There, you're an athletic. Yeah, very you're, fast. You're an athletic mode today. But, 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 but. <laughs> the only better timing that I've ever seen. Uh, I have to tell this story because it reminds me so much of it. And this is, you just experienced a fraction of it was the time my brother-in-law, Chris, had just been at my brother's house and had repaired a broken rocking chair. A rocking chair that had been completely like multiple pieces. Like an antique, an older and one? He like spent some time, like 20, 30 minutes or whatever, like piecing it back together. And then he sits in the chair and he starts rocking in the chair and everybody's like, Chris, you did it, you made, and then his wife, Ashley, says, he's pretty handy. And literally as she finished the word handy, the entire chair collapsed <laughs> and he fell to the floor. And it was like, <laughs> it was like, like it, it wasn't was like even a there. cartoon. Yeah, he went, boom, all the way to the floor, rocking chair everywhere. <laughs> it's pretty handy. Boom. <laughs> it's one of my favorite moments in life oh, man. that I've experienced. He is so, pretty handy though. So you're in, uh, you know, we don't we don't make a practice of commenting on each other's um, ensembles usually. I mean, well, we don't, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jenna, but yeah, Jenna does. You might be the most likely to, yeah. to do so. You're in athletic mode today. Yeah, thank you. I, I it's um, to make myself go to the gym after. You look very. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Very like, speedy. I'm already in the outfit. I'm ready. I'm gonna go do it. I thought you might be a part of a location scout today. Oh, is okay. what I when okay. I saw you in the parking lot, you were waiting, and I was like, okay, they must be going in like lo location scouting today. <laughs> I'm in like mobility mode. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like to have different different modes. I'm coming off of um, two days of snowboarding, mm. and um, I want to tell you about it because I just I have some thoughts about it. I went with Lincoln and one of one of my boys from the scooter club. One okay. of the guys. Um, Fellow snowboarder? Is also a snowboarder. He had plans to go with his daughter uh, this past weekend, and then she had she, she had to bail. And so then he was like, hey, I got this condo. I'm still going. I got another bed. Does anybody else want to go? And my big Christmas present to myself was a snowboard. Mm. And Lincoln's big Christmas present was a snowboard. And actually the reason why we bought snowboards was my friend Will was like talking it up because you know, I'd switched to skiing. Yep. Many years ago when you decided to switch to skiing and you were like, you know, it's like, this is gonna, this is gonna take us into our old age, you know? It's like, you can't be a snowboarder forever. You gotta be, skiing is, well, skiing is the future. To be specific, for me. For you. I wasn't telling you that you needed to switch. But I was listening. I switched because of my back. Skiing, harder on the knees, better on the back. Snowboarding, harder on the back, easier on the knees. Okay. That might be a, a rough generalization, but and it, and you, it makes... fall, you fall on your butt a lot, and if you catch an edge, it like the way that it messes with my lower back, 
snowboarding, I just kind of had to give it up, even though I really liked it. I liked it more than skiing. I felt like I wanted to make that transition, and you know, it would be a good time to do it along with you. And then we're like, the kids were learning, kind of trying to learn how to ski. And this is like, what, over the past decade? Mm, yeah. maybe, maybe eight years. Um, but then he was like, the last spring break trip that we took, Lincoln and his friends tried snowboarding, and Lincoln absolutely loved it. And then I tried it one day, remember I told you, and I was mm -hmm. like, see if it would come back from like all the years I snowboarded. That's, I've still snowboarded a lot more years than I have s skied. And was immediately still better than skiing. So I, I was like, man, this is still more fun. And so then my friend Will was like, you know, you can get a, if, if you're getting a snowboard kit now, you can get one of these where it's like, you can step right in, like step-ons. There's no straps. Right. You just, you just, you got this nice boot that then goes into this special binding and it hooks in the heel and then hooks on either side of your front, your toes, the right and left. So you just kind of click in and then you don't have to sit your butt down on the snow and like do all the straps and all this stuff. And then if that would be essential to me, because also the sitting down. And then standing up is just tired in, in the snow Too is much. really hard on my back as well. So that's what we got. How do you, how do you get out of it? Um, there's a little lever on the outside of the back heel, and you just pull it up. And so let you it, have to bend down it, and grab that. You just kind of, you just you can do that while you're still going. You're getting back to the lift, and but you, you're squatting down. How you're squatting down to do that? No, you just bend over. I mean, how do you touch your heel? You bend With over with the ski pole. <laughs> Well, yeah, you, I'm, yes, I don't yes want, you have to bend over. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying I, just I, grab I try my to heel, minimize the amount of that. I pull the, I'm just gauging this for myself. Pull the lever up on my back foot, my trailing foot, and then your heel comes out, and then you twist your front feet, and it comes out, and it's like the simplest thing ever. Okay. There's no getting used to it. Like the first run that we took down the mountain, I was shaky because it had been a, almost a year since I snowboarded. And like, you know, you got to, Get your mojo back. Did you bust at all? The first um, time you did it, did you bust? No. Because you're just going slow and yeah, like keeping just it. taking it easy. Um, but it was there wasn't a material difference in the experience of like these step ons versus like having normal bindings. Like super happy with it. And in the boots that you're you're in, are they stiffer than a normal snowboard boot? Yeah, a little bit. But they're not like a ski boot. No, the ankles are not stiff. No, no, no. Just the bottoms. It's just like you tighten. I mean, you, you want it to be very rigid and very tight. But like the way that you have these like this boa system is what they call it, where it's like wires that like you like crank down these knobs and it like pulls it all together. And like the technology is just amazing. And so it was very exciting to have these things and like to try out our, our Christmas gifts. And we're on the lift and like, um, Lincoln doesn't emote a lot. He's not talkative in general. Um, and if he's really enjoying something, he doesn't gush. You kind of have to like really listen closely and realize that, oh, this is, this is middle child Lincoln's version of gushing. We're, we're on the lift going up. We had done like a few runs on the first day. And he was like, Dad, what do you think the best thing ever is to do? And I was like, this is pretty good. I don't know, maybe this is up here. He's like, I think this is it. Wow, that's a it's like, hearty endorsement. It, may, that, it makes me feel good. That, like, I, you know, I ushered him into this world and he's like, I love it. And like, you know, we scuba dive together. We did that in New Zealand. We're doing the snowboarding together. Um, I got him into the one wheels just like uh, Shepard does. And um, did he say that one, one wheeling like, tr translates well to snowboarding? Because that's what yeah Shepard has read. That's why he wants to do it because it, it it's does. a one wheel theme. Yeah, it it certainly helps. I mean, you still don't have the edge the edge experience um, with snowboarding. You got to know your. It's all about you know carving on your edges and stuff. But it's the same feel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it definitely helps. Um, but I was like, yeah, what, what is the best thing, like the best experience? And the more I thought about it, I was like, well, you know, I mountain bike a lot. It's convenient. I don't have to drive like five hours to do it like I do for 
snowboarding. I don't have to, um, you know, scuba diving is really amazing. It's otherworldly. But you do just like, you do a day trip. It has a couple of dives. And so you're dedicating this whole day for like two or three 45 to 60 minute experiences. But by the time you get to like a mountain, and if, if it's decent or good conditions, not even like great and most fabulous, it's, it may be the best activity. It's just so much fun to be on the mountain, man, to be snowboarding. We had so much fun. I, I love it. I'm realizing how it's, so I'm ranking snowboarding. I'm agreeing with Lincoln. I think I'm ranking it number one for me. When you say activities. With clothes on. Okay. That is what I, I was like, <laughs> son, I was like. I just wanted to clarify. Activities with clothes on. I think that snowboarding is now my number one. Yeah. I think mountain biking you can may, do a lot with your clothes on. Maybe my number two. <laughs> but you know, why don't you just say non-sexual? Sex. Yeah, I'll just say non-sexual. Outside of the world uh, of sex, snowboarding is it for you? Better than eating? Oh, hundred percent. Oh no, eating. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Number one, sex. Number two, eating, and then we get into the physical activities. So, for for me. me, for okay, for me, I'll put sex as number one. I'm going to put snowboarding as number two. I'm going to put. And I want to hear your list. I'm going to put mountain biking at number three is a close shave above scuba diving because scuba diving is just so amazing. Uh, I, don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm so prepared to, to, to make a list here. So, you got to make a list because I want to know what's, uh, and you can put food on this list. I'm putting food on my list. Scuba diving. You can put food after mountain biking? And then, and then after, oh, definitely. A smash burger that we just talked about? I would, I would. The the way that you feel about clothes that you would wear the same outfit every day is the way that I feel about food. I I would I yeah. would give up as long as I liked it, I would eat my smoothie every day, every meal, and just get it over with. As much as I do enjoy food, but I don't I, I observe how people who really enjoy food, like you <laughs> Well, I'm jealous of you. And Christy really enjoys when you some really food, enjoy I just food. Don't, it can make discipline very difficult. I don't yeah, I I I don't have that. So then it come then after that I'm gonna put food. No, I will say you no, I'm a, I think I'm gonna put naps before food. You can't just eat smash burgers all day though. I, what I'm saying is that not a cumulative experience, but when you get that smash burger and when you take that first bite and then like maybe the next four to six bites, that period of time, which I recognize is for me, it's about forty five seconds. <laughs> We're talking <laughs> sub minute here. That's an incredible minute. Right. Now, well, I can't... Hold on, are we, are we talking about sex now? Yeah, yeah. I can't sustain... I'm talking about burgers. I can't sustain that for very long. So scuba diving, cumulative experience is, is much more pleasurable time. I, I, don't, you know, I don't know how to measure that. It's like measuring like what is work, you know? Is it the amount of weight that you oh. move over? A, I don't, it, there is a definition I can't remember because <laughs> we make internet videos now. But like the amount like, of time that you put in. Force over distance or time. time yeah, time. All right. I don't know. I don't know. So pleasure right. can be measured in some sort of similar, by some me metric, that time. So, but we are now. Slight pleasure forever. I, we are now ranking awesome. pleasure experiences. And you know what? If. Jenna, Jamie, if y'all are, if you want to develop your list, you can you can throw it in here. I am now developing <laughs> mine as my number one is sex in every form, all the sexuals, okay, activities, every form, <laughs> every form that I enjoy. I mean, uh, okay, then I'm gonna put snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> that was starting to seem weird. Yeah. <laughs> because now we're adding like food and naps and everything into it. And then after after snowboarding, Do you, I think I'm gonna put I think I'm gonna put naps with my dogs. No, you I'm calling you, another you, thing. What I'm, about surfing? Hold on, I'm I'm okay. I'll take that into account. I've now I'm now moving naps with my dogs up to number three. And then I'm putting mountain biking and then I'm putting scuba diving just on the heels of that. And then I'm putting eating, the most pleasurable foods to me. 
Okay. And then after that, what about getting a massage? You really like those? Then after that, I'm gonna put a massage. I think you like massages more than eating, based on what I've seen. Yeah, because I will, if I'm really hungry, I won't eat before a massage. You ever try eating during a massage? No, or I don't <laughs> like to eat right before a massage. You I, don't wanna do that. Well, let's get a restaurant going. Smash burger. Oh, smash you back we mash, burger? We mash you back while we're smashing the burger. Sma smash, <laughs> so it'd just be mash, mash burgers. And we feed the burger. And you're the thing. We mashed. feed the burger through the hole that your face is coming down. <laughs> <laughs> and it, but it's toward the second half of the massage. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's once they, well, they start your face where we're at. You start face up. What do you mean where we're at? Oh, in our, our place, restaurant. Typically, you start face down and then turn face up. We start the massage face up. Yeah. And we turn you over, give you a burger. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay, yeah. You, fin you, want you finish with a milkshake. Right. Right through the hole. Yeah. We'll look into it. So what is your what is your list? Who's prepared to go next? Uh, you can add anything to it. What's your number one? This isn't how my brain works. My brain doesn't organize pleasurable experiences. It brings them all, just like burgers or foods, to a place where I am in a certain state. So... Are you talking about like you want you like to have a rotation where it's like you give them all? No, I'm it's saying like they're your babies and I'm you're giving them all attention. My pleasure receptors are pinged fully at certain states. You have to rank them, dude. No, I'm I don't. I, you. You, I don't have to rank them. <laughs> so catching a wave, and again, I'm much more about what is the moment within the experience because every single thing that you've mentioned require like mountain biking requires. A lot of work to get to the top of the mountain that, before that, you start having that, fun. That's the problem with it. And now it makes that moment that much more fun because it's that much more rewarding, but it's hell getting up the mountain, right? Scuba yeah. diving, like you said, especially in California, especially if you're on a boat going out to a good spot, the time, the preparation, the equipment, the just getting the damn potential equipment sickness, on. Nausea. Uh, for that moment. That's why, that's why eating is so much easier because all I got to do is just go into a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, no there's work. That. I drove there. <laughs> I didn't climb to it. Yeah, I mean. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, you just have to pay for it. That's the only sacrifice. Catching a wave, which I'm not a good surfer. You're a better surfer than me, and you're not a good surfer. I, I suck at it. And so. I'm worse than you. And But when you get a wave, and like that time I got a wave and a dolphin took it with me. Yes, but you're thinking about just that moment. That moment. I'm not asking it, you. I can't. Get, I'm asking above, you to I hit the ceiling. Rank activities. <laughs> I can't do it. Not moments. I can't do it. But what I but what I do, but I, what I am interested in, uh, because you're really tempting me to try to snowboard. I know, dude. Uh, but I just don't. You're still know. so much better at it than skiing. I got a lot better at skiing. Like, can we? I want to pause this. I got better at skiing. I. I I want to put a pin I'm in pretty good at skiing. this conversation. I want to have this conversation, but I want to finish the ranking conversation. And if you're not going to participate, I will find <laughs> others who will. I refuse to participate because it would be dishonest. Okay. Can you all help me out here? I mean, you don't, however you want to do it. Is there something we're missing? What's like? I mean, well, I think you're right. I think most people are going to put sex first because, I mean, come on. That's just great. Um, I, I, I personally cannot snowboard or ski i have tried and yeah, you don't i i you don't, don't have, have compare that. your list of mine i like jet skiing a lot jet, skiing. jet skiing is jet fun skiing is jamie's number two <laughs> well no it goes sex eating jet skiing okay because okay. i'm i'm all about food like jet if i could skiing. just like if i could never get fat like i would just eat constantly would be what i would do but jet skiing? I think it's really fun because you go really fast. You're on a vehicle thing, but you're in yeah. the water. I like being in the yeah, water, yeah, yeah. and I like going fast. And, like, so that's really fun. And I really liked um, uh, ATV riding in the sand dunes. That's fun, too, man. Yeah, so that, that's, that's, that's super good. fun. And that's, like, I mean, it took me a minute to get used to it, but once I got used to it, you're like, ugh, there's so many possibilities. Where do you go jet ski? I got to get Christy on a jet ski. Uh, San Diego, like in Mission Bay. Yeah. It's, like, super fun over there. You can go by that big, big that calm. big boat, the something USS something. something. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the battleship. Yeah. 
But see where my mind goes as you talk Jet about these skiing. things. And, and in, incidentally, this is where the idea for the seven seals of satisfaction came from in Buddy System season two. This is this is doing them all at once. Is that <laughs> yeah yeah yeah? My when you talk about you you said sex eating and jet skiing, and I immediately just pictured myself doing all three at the same time. I don't know why, <laughs> right? <laughs> but again, I'm trying to maximize yeah, yeah. the moment. I can't, you start wanting me to put this into a list and I just start wanting to combine the things and create a new experience. That would be Sex awesome. Ski. Yeah, if you could do that, if there was a way to stay on the jet ski and do all of those things, like how amazing would that experience be? I think oh, you yeah. can do both. You can definitely eat on a jet ski. What is that called? I mean, you're talking about and, and getting a well, massage? S- sex ski is having sex on a jet ski. Yeah. <laughs> it's like sex ski brunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With a mimosa. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if I could put drinking in there, that's probably <laughs> rounding yeah, out Yeah, we didn't put five. drinking. <laughs> okay. Um, Jenna, what are you bringing to this? I Put I, you on the spot here. I am i don't think I could rank either because I'm one of those, like, uh, if I would rank it, I'd rank it on, like, w- the new experiences I've tried. Like, it's always the new mm. thing. Like, uh, when I when I did, like, uh, you know, when I uh, went skydiving, I was like, that was... Like the best thing, but I did it once, and maybe I'll do it okay. again. But it's not like you don't want to do it every weekend. No, no, something I would do every weekend. Um, sex and eating uh, every <laughs> weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I I'm a skier. I'm not a snowboarder. I tried snowboarding, and my knees um my de- my knees didn't like me at all. Huh. So I'll skiing is much on easier on my body. There's something about being on the m- on the mountain and it can be so quiet. Like mm. the snow makes everything so quiet. And if you're at a space with like good conditions and not a lot of people, I mean, if you can find yourself on a slope, like just on your own, it's, or just with like a loved one or something. You or can't compadre. do that at Big Bear. You have to go to Mammoth to do that. We were at Mammoth and it was, uh, it was still, you know, you're not gonna find that much space, but there's just something, totally zen about it it's totally peaceful and you can be in your own world and jenna like you're saying it's just knowing knowing the parameters of your body and working within like they they you know they always push ski within your ability you know you don't want to damage yourself or hurt other people i mean that's one of the major ways people get injured is like collisions but if you can just make up your mind and I'm really doing a much better job at this now that I've revisited snowboarding. Like the way that we used to snowboard was like the way that you used to snowboard. balls to the wall. That's I've literally al- what I've we always say. exercised caution because I've been so injury prone. So yeah, I never pushed it like you did. And but I I felt like if I wasn't achieving something or getting really good and pulling off some sort of trick that it wasn't I wasn't doing it right. And now. You know, I'm a middle-aged man. So are you jumping at all? No, uh-uh. I'm carving and I'm just like, it feels like I'm painting with my feet. It's just, it, it can be the most relaxing and rewarding and you can get into a, what's it called? A zone, a flow state. You can get into a flow state on a jet ski, I bet. Yeah, as long as there's, like, not a lot of boats around, I think so. <laughs> okay, but let's talk about Flow this. Flow state. Let's talk about this snowboarding versus skiing. Because do you think that See, if, Jenna gets it. If, if, if you had, um, if you had gotten, you didn't ski as much as I did. Like, once we started skiing, I went, like, maybe five or six times more than you did. Yeah, I never got I got enough. where I could do, like, I mean... I could, you know, go down a black, but it would be completely pointless for me to do it because I'm just like skidding the whole time to go slow. But like blues, you know, blues in like whatever between, some places have blue between blue and black. Yeah, like a blue black thing. But mostly like blues and like not going too fast. Like you said, just carving. I got where I was having a really good time. I will say though, the thing that never leaves my mind, and I think this might be something that keeps me from having a great time, is just the thought of eating it. Yeah. 
running into somebody, having someone run into me, hitting a weird patch. And yeah, you know, I got when I got my concussion on a snowboard, it was because I caught an edge, and it's just like catching an edge with a snowboard is much easier to do than it is with skis. Yeah, just like slam, you can get slammed. And well, I guess my question before I go into that, it's like do, if you had gotten good enough at skiing, do you th you think you could reach a flow state, or do you? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right. I'm just trying to make sure there's not a definitive difference because you see the people. There's something about being in that position, which is like a skateboard slash one wheel slash surf position. Yeah. It obviously looks cooler because culturally it's cooler to be in that position because of the other sports that are associated with it. So that's, I think that's why Shepard wants to do it. That's why Lincoln wants to do it. Like I think that teens want to do it because yeah. it's clearly cooler than skiing. Right. I just want to do it because I can. I'm better at it, and I can enjoy it. Versus with skiing, I'm, I'm still trying I, I to get to I want to a believe point. that I'm tempted to believe that it's more fun than skiing, but I can't let myself believe that too much because I just don't think it's worth. I don't think it's worth the risk. Well, if we when we go together on a ski trip now, because I can just step in, you're not waiting on me, so it's a very similar experience. Um. The thing that I was thinking about was like, can I snowboard into old age? Like you see a bunch of people, a bunch of old guys skiing, just like, it's like golf on snow. It's like that, there's that many old people skiing. And it, that really gives, gave me hope with skiing that it could be a long-term, you know, rewarding adventure. You don't see a lot of 70 plus year olds snowboarding. But and that must be because of the 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 way the injuries. I, I don't know. I think it's, or is it just because it's less of them do it to begin with? I think it's because the sport is younger. Yeah, they just haven't got the old I, snowboarders haven't so happened yet. That's now my hope. You know, I mean, to to be able to ski or snowboard or whatever, like any type of type of like physical activity, and it was very much on my mind driving out yesterday. The thing I like about it is that it says okay, it tells me. This is something I can work towards in terms of fitness. Like I've got to stay at a certain level of fitness so that I can continue to enjoy this activity that apparently is my number two activity, <laughs> you know, up until like I'm 80 years old. So so I got to you're 80? 75. Like the consequences of a of a fall increase with age and because don't talk me out of it talk, no, talk me into fitness i'm just saying because That's, that was my point if you get hurt snowboarding it's probably going to be because some jack leg who just learned how to ski runs into you yeah we got to learn to be very defensive sometimes you don't see him yeah i know i know but i i think i could right now i'm just saying it, it aligns my motivations, you know, to enjoy mountain biking, you gotta be a certain level of fitness to enjoy, you know, to enjoy oh, yeah. snowboarding. So like, I, got, I gotta start doing, I gotta start doing some more weights or something. Yeah. Hmm. So that's where I'm at. I, w we had a great time. I did not, I ate it a few times, but it's mostly like oh, coming, really? coming off of the lift or, so when you come off the list, it's the same thing. You got one, you got one, you got a front foot in. Yeah. Back foot just kind of goes on the board. Yeah. I'm pretty That's good at it, that, though. Those are the things that I kind of forgot about. And then when I went skiing, I was very grateful. Like getting off the lift is so, such a breeze. And then you just, yeah. whoop, you just keep going. Yeah. And also when you get to the flat parts. Yep. That, that's it's a breeze. I'm fine with getting off the lift, but it is, it requires concentration. The flat parts, there's no way around it, you know. I can easily pop my foot out and then start, you know, kick push type thing. But, but can skiers and snowboarders really hang? I mean, that's the thing. If we go on the mountain, can we really be friends? I think it's gonna be like the burger thing. I think you <laughs> yeah. go down, I go down, we, we meet later and talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we can be seen on the lift together. <laughs> yeah. It's a fox and the hound situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you missed my party because of this. It's totally worth it, I think. But then uh, Christy was telling me that, like, <laughs> she was like, there were people everywhere. 
first of all, like the amount of turnout, like I've never seen as many people at your house as Christy described. She was like, there were people everywhere. It wasn't like there wasn't a place you could go to like have a little space. It was a good crowd. And I, I was like, first of all, that's a good party when you got, you were concerned about turnout because it was a New Year's Eve party that then got moved a month later and then every, people didn't even know. Well, not a month later, two weeks later. Um, so you had a good turnout. Well, so the original conception of the party was Jesse's idea. And, you know, I have this, um, as I've talked about on this very show, I have this desire to do these events that are not just normal parties. You know, and I felt like when Jesse had this idea for a New Year's Eve party, and she was like, and it was a last minute thing at the time, because it was two weeks until New Year's, and she was like, let's just have a party with just whoever happens to be in town during New Year's Eve, which in LA is not a lot of people. Most people are from somewhere else. They go back home, whatever, yep. traveling. And then once we started kind of putting together the list, we, we started realizing this is a really interesting mix of people because it's people that she knows that I don't really know, people that I know that she doesn't really know, people that I know through what I do, but also our friend, collective friends and parents of kids that our kids are friends with. And I've never mixed that those groups of people, other than maybe like my birthday, 40th birthday party, which was, you know, also had a bunch of mythical people. It was massive. But... I haven't had a party like this in a really long time. And I was a little bit like, oh, well, this guy's going to come and, you know. There, there was at least 15 people that had never been to our house before and had never, had maybe met the other half of the couple, Rhett and Jesse, once or none. So, so how you, many, know, you know what so I'm getting what was at? the total that was there then? 60 people? No, no, no. No. Christy made it seem like there was like 60 people there. Man. Max 40. Oh, okay. Well. And but, you, you had a bar. You had an open bar, but it was coffee. Well, we had a we had a coffee bar because Jesse did that for Locke's graduation party where you can get somebody who's just going to make coffee drinks. Like and, people like to drink night coffees? Uh, well, they certainly did at Locke's graduation party. Now, they had decaf everything. Okay. Uh, That's a good idea. The coffee idea. bar was not popular enough to do it again. That oh. was the conclusion we came to. And then we had like our little bar area just had like wine, champagne, beer, liquor, and you can mix it, whatever. You can kind of make your own thing. Okay. I think I would actually do a bartender who was making drinks yeah. next time versus a Pl And then bar. they can make a coffee drink too. Maybe I don't want to make a. I mean, maybe an espresso martini. I don't know. I don't want to. I want yeah, to, I want to speak for him. That's what I would have. Um, I'll get to the main event in a second, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of the taking a baby step towards what some people might call a salon type event. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what they would call oh. it out here, right? Like a, <laughs> a, a salon. A salon is like when that's where people, my grandma gets her hair did people gather and then there's like <laughs> something that happens from a person or and we talked about the uh like the pasta and powerpoint idea yeah. of taking something like that and doing something like a group activity that was fun um well because it was a new year's eve party we originally were planning on ringing in the new year that wasn't happening so what i did that got some good feedback was I just put, uh, I went on YouTube and got like the late 70s, early 80s, and some 90s Dick Clark's rocking New Year's Eve, whatever. Like they're just on YouTube and just put them on a playlist. And so it was all these old acts and stuff playing just without the sound on because we had a playlist going the whole time with music. But it was like, you got to see like, oh, there's Alabama playing the 1985 rocking <laughs> New Year's Eve. <laughs> on mute. On mute. That's cool. So that was a nice little touch. But uh, you but I heard that you had some synchronicity with between the Dick Clark thing and like a pseudo countdown. Uh that was accidental and I'll tell that story in a second. Well, Christy Christy said Rhett Rhett was playing this old Dick Clark New Year's Eve countdown and he timed it yep. to where 
the countdown, and we all did the countdown. Hmm. The countdown led to like 10 minutes to, what time was the main event? 10.30. 10.30. 10.40. Yeah, she was like, until like 10.30, and then the countdown went, Straight went to off, the main event. And then it went straight into the main event. And I was like, total oh, luck. Oh, that, that was, Im- <laughs> I was really impressed by that. Total and luck. Total luck? Yeah. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you, you fooled her, man. You fooled everybody. Yep. I'm glad. <laughs> I, I, you know, sometimes things work out. Sometimes you just got to start something and things work out. Things fall into place. That's what you should have planned. I was giving you so much credit. Uh, yeah, it was all intentional. Like, <laughs> did everybody count down? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They did. Now, the thing that I noticed, and of course, our friend Gar was there, and Gar is uh, very observant, the most observant person that I know in terms of just like yeah. social dynamics and stuff. Uh, he he is uh, better known as the batting stance guy. You know, he's uh, he observes l- literally can do like every batting players. stance of a, every major league baseball player that you care to know about. And uh, it's a very niche talent that, you know, the MLB loves him because he's so good at this. They'll bring him into the locker room before a game and he and they, the team's call him in because he's, he's, he's freaking incredible. And like that audience is so primed for his particular talent that no one else has. And there are times when Gar will break this out at a party, not because he's like, he wants to do it, but because somebody who knows he can do it starts egging him on. I'll get to that in a moment, but Gar came up to me an hour and a half into the party, and he was like, you know how Gar would communicate this, he was like, well done. (laughs) He was like, good party. This group of people that you have assembled is like, he's like, there's not, a you don't go to a lot of parties like this where you've got like, that couple is obviously Friends of, you know, parents of one of the kids' friends. Yeah. Different vibe than, oh, that person is from the entertainment industry. And these are very different vibes. And you usually go to parties where it's like one or the other. Yeah. And we just were like, these are our people, are our friends. And let's just bring them all together. And it's like, it seems like everyone really. It worked. Dug that vibe of like, this person has this really interesting job that's not in the industry. But industry people get tired of hanging out with industry people because they tend to be mm, vampires, <laughs> leeches, <Yeah>. shallow <clears throat> status people, right? And so uh, he was kind of talking about that dynamic because, you know, he's, right. with, his, with his connections, he ends up experiencing these types of gatherings, and he was just, like, having a blast seeing people interact. But then... Uh, Jess and Jesse is doing this thing where she'll like go up and be like, "This is so and so, and uh, he's a you know Grammy award winning like stuff that no one wants to say. Grammy award winning producer, and this is so and so, and he's a so and he, he he's an Imagineer at Disney. And she's like, she'll like say that, so then they've broken the ice and don't have to have that conversation about right, it. right. Their uh, yeah, and then they start talking, and so but then when she goes up to my new friend Jake, who you haven't met yet. She's like, uh, this is this, this is, is your potential golfing buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, we're working it out. We're working on the date right now. He's like, uh, you can be so old and do that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jesse was like, this is uh, Jake. He's a musician. This is uh, Gar. He n- can do batting stances. <laughs> 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 what she did not know is that Jake played Division One college baseball. Oh, and no. it's a freaking baseball. Freak. Here we go. And the guy that he brought is also a baseball guy. Oh yes, that just set it off. And then there's this just, was not the main event, by the no, way. No, this is not. Event. Event. This is hired just Gar to be there. in my hall, <laughs> and they're just calling out people. And you know, I I know a few baseball players. Dale Murphy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I I know, like, the all-stars throughout the years. Wade Boggs. But what I don't know is the the specific ones where someone is trying to throw him off and throw out somebody they're just thinking about because they know baseball, and then he can do it perfectly. I'm entertained by that because I don't... It's blowing their mind. Because I don't... Because I'm observing the niche coming together, and they were flipping out. They had the best time. 
<laughs> because he was doing the thing and he was going into all his stuff where he ex- <laughs> emphasizes certain things. It yeah. was just, it was a beautiful moment. But yes. I can't believe you didn't plan the countdown. So, yeah, so back to that. the main event. The, you, main, the, the, the thing, you, it was, you did plan to have a main event, which I was like, what time did that happen? And Christy was like, yeah, 10, it was like 10.30. I was like, that was smart, because then every, it gives people a reason to stay at the party. It's kind of like the people who are looking for a reason, like, oh, I showed up, and now I'm, I'm probably going to go at like 10.00. Now they're like, well, I'm going to stay till 1030 because of the, the you-know-what that's about to happen. That was really smart, right? You got everybody sticking around because there's something. It's like the cutting of the cake at the wedding reception. Yes. Well, the, you got to stay until they cut the cake. I don't and, even like cake, and but the, you got to stay until they cut the cake. And there was a little bit of a preamble because um, – so we asked Robert, the mythical magician that you may know from Good Mythical Morning Appearances – uh, and I think he's done, did he do, he did a, did he do a society special too? Or did he? did. He, uh-huh. Yeah, that's what he did, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and he did a party that you were at DJing. Yeah. He did Laura's graduation party yeah. like a month earlier. Um, and so we were like, yeah, let's have a magician. Because why not? Because how, how often do you go to a party at somebody's house and they have a freaking magician? Not often. Nope. And, uh. More often than a guy who can do any batting stance, but still not that often. And I also, it, the funny thing about it is, because I was telling Gar this, I was like, I think our connection to Robert actually started with us. It started, the the very beginning of it was us making fun of magicians. Yeah. Because we, 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 we've established that we have, we've made fun of magicians on this show. Yeah. Not that we don't appreciate it, but like it, we kind of poke fun at them. And then the whole thing started with Stevie telling us that she had been to a, she had seen a Zoom musician, so we were, m- magician, so we were like, we're gonna have that for our Christmas party. That's what it was. And, and so he he did the mythical Christmas party in 2021, completely over because it was Zoom. all all Zoom, and we did it because we like to do things that are a little bit weird to make people feel awkward. But what ended up happening is he did such a good job, yeah, that everybody was just like, I just unabashedly love that. Yeah. And so then he just kind of became a part of, the, when we need a magician, we go to Robert. And uh, so Robert came early and just walked around the party and we just kind of go up to a group of people and start doing close magic, which is a cool thing to happen at a party. Yeah. You know, you didn't expect it. Like, who's this guy? And all of a sudden he's got a deck of cards and he's doing something. Stealing your wallet. And... Um, <laughs> Only to give it back to you. And then... He did it. We did a thing. So you know how our living room has steps that go up into the main part of the house. Yeah. So it's kind of like sunken. Yeah. So we put him on the top of the steps, like a like, like a, a stage. stage. Yeah. Okay. Everybody sat in the living room, and we were able to fit every. There was a couple of people who didn't come in. Uh, one of our friends, which I will remain nameless, who you'll be able to guess, was like, "I'm uncomfortable with magicians, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to watch this." Which made total sense to me, and there was a, so a few people didn't go in, but it was there was enough room, and uh, he did like a I don't know, half hour show, and people just people just loved it because it was kind of unexpected. It gives you a focal point, yeah, and it was just and not then, only to stick around, but to... and then once he was done, there are people. There's a certain group of people who are like, well, we don't stay at people's homes past midnight. Mm-hmm. We're going home, you know, sixty percent. But then there's the forty percent who are like, "Well, as long as you guys are here and up, we'll still we're, we're sticking around." Yeah. So like the last person left at like one a.m. or something like that. So it was a lot way, way past my bedtime. <laughs> well, I hate I missed it. You know, if I wasn't doing the number one thing on my list that wasn't right. sex. Uh... Yeah, magician parties. I you didn't rank that anywhere. Nope, nowhere at all <laughs> that I heard. You know, don't. I mean, I still don't think I am. No, but, but but jet skiing is now definitely on my list. But we immediately the next morning we're talking about the things that we would do differently yeah, yeah, to yeah. make it easier on ourselves just to do it. But how much fun we had, and then I got so many texts from people the next day who were just like, "I had such a great time. That was a great time. I loved getting to know your other friends." Like it was, I I was kind of nervous about that whole like this couple only knows Jesse. Hey, you know what? People come to a party, they can meet people. But yeah, it's not, I, it's you, you, you know? 
Well, but you, you set the table, but everybody's got to eat. Yeah, I was just very happy with the fact that people just kind of just there did their go. own thing, and like everybody was talking and having conversations, and everyone stayed. And so the only change is no coffee bar, more alcohol. Which who's going to argue with that? I think a, a a bartender instead of a coffee bar. You can't go with a magician again. Oh hell no! Not nothing against magicians, but that was just the that I'm not yeah, gonna, do, I'm gonna mix it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe a um. I don't think mechanical it has, bull. It doesn't <laughs> tournament. <laughs> it doesn't have to be one focal point. It could be we're gonna do this thing where it's more like the moth, where uh, we would like you to prepare a story that is about this kind of thing, and the first fifteen people to sign up. Oh, can tell a five minute story or a three minute story or something like that. And then, so then it's like, well, if I don't want to tell a story, I don't have to. But people who want to tell stories are encouraged to do so. Huh. And so then we have a moment where everyone is like entertaining one another versus it being one person. Interesting. The other thing I'm going to do differently is we we got all our food from Porto's, which was great because it's all like finger food, you know. Mm -hmm. But we got we got it and we served it and we heated it up. And so there was just like, you know, I feel like you got the food situation. We got to think about that a little bit. Think I think in order to really focus, I think you got to get it catered. I think put, you're, put I think your kids you, in tuxes, man. I think you got shepherd in a tux. <laughs> like you got to go the lowest level of catering. Mm -hmm. I don't want like people coming. I don't want it to be fancy. People coming around with plates of food. I'm just saying that like you don't want to make the food hot. Yeah, and okay. worrying about switching the things out, but well, dang, like, hey, I missed it, man. You got to come to the next one. It'll be well, it'll be planned well in advance. Okay, okay. You think you're gonna get people to tell stories? Oh, that's just an idea. I mean, first of all, in Los Angeles, man, it's plenty of you stories. got all these people, and the thing is, is that you don't just get the people who come from an entertainment background to tell stories. You get the person who just has a really interesting. You might have to job you might or have experience, to, and then I might have to give a little. I might have to give them a little call and give them a little nudge and be like, "Hey, I, you, know. you might have to narrow down the topic." Oh no, no, it wouldn't just be. It would be, "Do you have a story about pudding?" Just to, to use the, the, you know, that well, might be a little too. Uh, that's a little too narrow. But do you want me to share five stories? Do no. you have a near death experience? <laughs> okay, you know, and so then we serve like death by chocolate cake. At the end, and you've got oh. so it's a death theme, and it's oh, just like near death experience. That could be Halloween. Uh, you you do some kind that's of that's a good like Halloween that. theme. Maybe that's the October party is near death experiences. Yeah, and nobody has to dress up. You could if you want to, but you could if you wanted to, but that's not the theme of the party, right? Well, I don't. I'm making no commitments. Making no commitments at this point. Well, neither am I. Then I might show up, or I might. Be snowboarding. <laughs> Got to hear about the deets, the details. Um, I think my recommendation this week, if I'm going to wreck it up, it's my turn to give a recommendation, it is, is um, make your list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? It's, it's good to know what you enjoy. Like I said, I mean, I know some people are against it, and you know what? It's not for everybody to, like, well, make a list. Maybe the thing that... But to identify... You don't have to rank them. An un, maybe it's an unranked pool yeah. of activities, and you might say, you know what? I need to add a few on there. Or my, It's a vision board. My, a vision, yeah, creative... If you don't want to make a list, a make a vision, vision board. A board of pleasure. Yes. A pleasure board. And it... And, one Char of your things may be trying something new just once, like Jenna said. And then you're like, then you're like, oh, yeah, I need to come up with something new. I there made a go. vision board last night. You made a one last night? I did, yeah. Oh, I had I had some friends over. We had a games and arts and crafts and a, a See, bunch of girlfriends. Jenna's doing it. Fun. Jenna's yeah. having curated oh. parties. It, it was a curated party, yeah. And, like, some of us, like, did arts and crafts and made vision boards. Um a friend of mine loves making jewelry, so she brought some of her jewelry stuff. Okay. And then we like all sat down and played like dominoes for a while, and yeah, it was a blast. It was this Very a curated. life vision board, a or what I'm saying, a pleasure vision board. It was a it was a year vision a board of yeah things okay. that I uh, of things that I want to come into my life and like the things I want to do. Okay. Yeah. So kind of I guess it is a pleasure board, but for yeah, the yeah. for the year. Okay. All right. All right. I like it. I kind of want to see it, but I'll show, I'll, tell, I'll send it. I'll show you a photo. I is mean, it, if, I, if people want to see it, I'll I, yeah. I picture it like um, 
It's like a vacation Bible that. school felt board. Um, no, it's so much better. <laughs> oh, it's better than felt. You, you don't have to. Sh- you don't have to publish it. But if you're going to show it to us now, we'll just describe it in general yeah. terms. I'm not trying to publish your personal vision board. I mean, there's nothing. Like okay, I'm just going to describe it. Um, yes, it's it's like cut out Ooh. felt. It's felt pieces <laughs> on like a. Fe- it's like you know how felt sticks to felt. And if you're a child and you go to like it's not felt. vacation Bible it's not school, felt. Yeah, but it's okay. if you want to defend yourself, you got to get back on mic. It's paper. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I would paper. say it's exactly it's, like it's my like a felt vacation Bible. I'm just okay. I'm just joking. That, that's, that's a collage. That's ve- pretty yeah, damn artsy. There's some velvet. In Where did there. you get these these things? It's like uh, an adult. Collage. Did you print yes, them out? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is an adult collage. Yeah. It's and exactly you, what I made. And you didn't leave any white space. I didn't. Well, it was also the the board that I used was something that I used for arts, uh, like a little art thing, like years ago. That it, you know, you just keep those boards, and you're like, I'm not gonna throw it away. That's wasteful. So I just like did something over top of it. You know how how bi- how painters always painted over their ma- masterpieces with another masterpiece. I'm comparing myself to yeah, yeah, yeah. a masterpiece painter but right now with my collage. Sense, like, <laughs> your <laughs> old vision, vision it should be replaced by your new vision. Yeah, yeah. I wow. love it. Yeah, it's Mod Podge collage, and there's a <laughs> Mod Podge That's collage. Good. And um, there's Mod a pa- Mod in Pasadena, Mod. there's um, a used arts and crafts store where you can go and get, like, it's super inexpensive, like, anything you need arts and crafts. Like half a pencil? Um... Yeah, that, that, but it's mostly like, you know, um, a, a crown set that was used like once or twice or like one thing is missing. That totally makes sense. And it's like, and um, all of the magazines that I got, I got for free there. Um, and they had a bunch of just like crafting magazines that had really pretty like art Love and this. visual stuff. Can you make one of these for me? Um, I'm kind of defeats well, the I, well, I've already given you my list. Uh, yeah, that's true. You've given me the list <laughs> and I'll, I'll need color palettes and I yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're going to be, it's part of your job. Yeah, I'll make a vision board your for hours. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm asking you to like Yeah, during do during it, work do hours. it as a hobby. I mean, this is a you know, this is you will be paid this for. This is you will be paid for. <laughs> that's a good I can service. Make you you one. Know? All right. Well, there well, I, I think that's my rec now. Get Jenna to make you a vision board. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, that was fun. Congratulations on your party, man. Congratulations on your oh, snowboarding. Gosh. I wish I, I wish I could do both. I wish I could be two Snowboard places. and party at the same time. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe that's what we do. We'll talk at you next week. In the meantime, call us and leave us a voicemail. About anything. That we would, that you, you basically you're daring us to respond. Oh, okay. 1-888-EARPOD-1. Hey, Rhett and Link. This is Richard from South Carolina. I just want to say I heard Rhett mention to eat raw block broccoli whenever you have the opportunity. And I just want to say I appreciate you saying that because me and my wife are eating more raw broccoli than we ever have before. Thank you.